All right, welcome back to the Trans Am. This is the 400 transmission. We got it all cleaned up and uh, painted. Just kind of painted it silver or aluminum color. And we got to put the flywheel on the back. So we got the new flywheel right there. We're going to put it on the back. And what I got to do is uh, get the engine up to the transmission so I can find some bell housing bolts. I don't have any bell housing bolts. Uh, so I'm going to have to dig and find some. And that way when I go to put the transmission in, I won't have to worry about uh, scrambling for bolts. We'll already have them uh, ready. But I'm going to go ahead and put the flywheel on and uh, I'll show you what else I got. So I got the transmission just temporarily bolted up to the engine. Uh, I did find some bell housing bolts, so we're good on that. And I also found some uh, torque converter bolts. And uh, so I'm going to unhook it from the engine. And I'm going to go ahead and put the engine in first, and then I'm going to stick the transmission in. Uh, we got some brand new transmission lines. They're from inline tube and they're direct fit for the Trans Am so you won't have to run your rusty old crusty old lines those are new so we'll be putting those on after we get everything in and we got the new de detent cable on passenger cable so I'm gonna go ahead and unhook it from the transmission and I'm going to uh, get the engine set in there and then we'll stick the transmission up under there. So you're probably wondering why I was going to put the engine in first. Because by the nose of these cars being so long, your cherry picker can hit the front bumper. And by this having a fresh paint job, you don't want that to happen. But I have ran out of room inches away from the motor mount and I can't push the cherry picker up any further so I'm going to have to uh, try to ex make an extension for the picker um, that will make it reach out further so I can just set it right on the mounts because uh, we got the bumper right here and I have no more room to go up and this thing is fully extended so I'm going to have to come up with a game plan uh, I don't have a uh, chain horse handy right now and uh, so I'm going to have to come up with a plan so I can get that thing right over there to the engine mount so, I'm going to uh, take a break, think about it, and I'll see what I can come up with. So, check out this idea I came up with. I got this uh, channel iron here. It's actually off a uh, pallet uh, rack, like what be in warehouses. So, what I did was cut the end off of it. And I slid it up on the end of this boom that adjusts for the cherry picker. And what I'm going to do is drill some holes in it. I'm going to put a bolt right here. And I might even put a big bolt right here. And then I'm going to come down here and put another hole. Probably somewhere. I don't know if I'm going to try and use that hole or somewhere in here. And I'm going to put the hook with a chain. And that should extend me out over to set the engine down on the mounts so uh, I'm going to work on that hopefully it don't flip the cherry picker over it shouldn't but I'm going to test it before I try and go over the front cap and into the engine bay so what I'm going to do um, I'm going to get to work drilling it out and uh, my battery's about to die on the camera so I'm going to let it charge up because I didn't charge it up from last time and uh 
show you what I come up with again. All right, look at the Cherry Picker 5000 or Engine Hoist 5000 or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so I drilled a hole here. We got the hook right here. And I drilled a hole through the uh, metal over here. And it should stay up on there because it's sitting on top of this boom it's in there real far so it shouldn't flex out but we're going to try it we're going to see if we can lift this thing and how high can we lift it okay y'all ready Okay, so this is what I did. I had this uh, shackle and I just scooted it up here and put the chain on there and uh, it's balancing itself right now. That should be right where I need it. Uh, it's just way past where it used to be. So I'm going to try and scoot it over in here and hopefully uh, nothing don't crash and burn, you know. That would suck. Kind of bouncy.
there. Then another problem is uh, the top of the car. It just don't get any better, huh? Just don't get any better. Uh, I should have flipped that angle around the other way. So, what now? <laughs> I had put a longer chain on it. We're still going to try it though. We're still going to try it. chain that ain't even be better but I can't set the engine down um. hmm. maybe we can put some two by fours up under the oil pan and uh I know you guys are like, what the hell are you doing? We might can put some 2x4s up under the oil pan and let it sit there and then I can put a longer chain on it. That might work. So let me figure that out. Okay. We might be able to might be able to swing it back and push it over there. If I can get it close to it, I'll be good. It's kind of hard to see. Ah. I think we're almost there. I know I'm over one of them. You can see down there. Kind of hard to see. Have to get a better light. But I'm over one of them. Let me get another light so we can see down there. I can't see nothing when everything painted black. Now you probably can see right there where the bolt hole is almost lined up on that mount and uh, over here it is sitting right on top of the mount so I just got to lower it a little bit but what I'm going to do is put that bolt in first and uh, try and put that one in first before I do anything so that way um, 
not want to be in, I won't have to worry about it. drop right on the mount. <laughs> so it's all lined up now. Kind of scared me though, but so I'm gonna go to the other side, put the other bolt in. And uh since it fell right on the mount as I was pushing it. It's right on it. I just gotta put the bolt in. Sketchy, sketchy, sketchy. up again. Well, I think what I need to do is scoot it over. Might be able to scoot it over a tad. They don't build these cars where you can actually work on them. Well, they didn't build these cars. I mean, that hole is like almost lined up. Knock it in there with a hammer. Put some pliers on it and straighten it up and hit it at the same time. So, camera's gonna be in the way, but we'll get it in there. But she is sitting in there. She's sitting in there real good. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get that bolt all the way through, and uh, I'm gonna call it a night. So, we'll pick up uh, another day, maybe tomorrow, and we'll go ahead and get the transmission up under the car and get it in but uh the sketchy uh <laughs> engine hoist extension worked with a little ingenuity and uh but these things suck to put engines in unless you take the front cap off so anyway all right 
till tomorrow. Greetings from Trans Am World. So, of course we got the engine in and we got it all supported with our engine support that's holding it up uh, where I put the transmission in. And I got the transmission in there, got a couple bolts holding it, and let's get down here. Light on the subject. So it's in, a couple bolts holding. I gotta uh, hook up the uh, torque converter bolts. I gotta hook up the shift cable and the speedometer cable and get the drive shaft ready to go in. I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning up up under here. Try and shoot a little paint on it, make it look good at the bottom. Uh, I was going to do it while I had the engine out, but uh, I decided I was just going to wait. I want to. We were missing so much stuff. I wanted to go ahead and just start putting it together because we were missing brackets and you know cables and all kind of other stuff. So it's better for me to start putting it together and then. We can finally see what we got. But yeah, transmission is in there. And I got to get started on uh, putting the dry shaft in and stuff like that. So, with having this uh, transmission jack here, it worked out pretty good. Just winded it up there and uh, was able to get it hooked up to the motor easy without having to put it on a regular jack and worry about it falling the transmission fluid will go everywhere but so and I gotta put the headers on while I'm, while I'm up under here so hopefully they will go on pretty easy I think they will since we can now get the car up higher in the uh, air so anyway I'm gonna do a little work and I'll show you uh, what else I've done here in just a sec so we got the transmission pretty much all in except for the transmission lines. Uh, right now I'm playing around with the headers. It's got uh, hooker headers. I've already got the driver's side installed. So uh, I'm working on the passenger side which is a little bit tight. I'm going to probably going to have to uh, take the oil filter off to get up between here because it's in the way it's not let me swing around and come around it and go up to the to the block so I'm going to have to take that oil filter off there um, pretty much just got this side just, just hanging in there so, but it is there. Uh, waiting on to get a part for the shift linkage that goes up there to the steering column. There's a linkage that goes on that arm right there. You can probably see the little arm with the right there. There's a, a lock lever that comes down down the frame and it goes in the in the frame right here then there's another arm that comes out of like a cup looking thing and it goes over to the transmission linkage that's what locks your steering column so nobody can't put it in gear and just roll off with it so I'm waiting on that uh, I'm gonna do some little touch up paint up under the frame right here get that cleaned up make uh, the lower A-frames and stuff look pretty good get off trying to get some of the surface rust. I was going to do it while the motor was out but uh, time went on I said well I can just put the engine in and finish it up we'll probably just kind of I mean everything's basically black so 
It's not going to be up under the car anyway. Unless you're going to show the car upside down. <laughs> anyway, there's our other hooker header. So I'm going to take the oil filter off and we'll see if we can get that thing to slide up there. All right, we're going to move this oil filter. Suckers on there tight too. I didn't know I put it on there that tight. Wow. All right. No, I'm gonna have oil raining all over the place. Might not. Hope not. I don't see nothing yet. Oh yeah, here she comes. This is gonna suck. Ah. Slip down my hand. It's all good. Even got oil in my mouth. <laughs> So, I guess that's going to be dripping for the next two years. Let me get the rag. Get off hopefully uh, don't drip to after we get the header up there man that breaking oil is thick I'm going to have to let the car down some. Just a little bit. Well, that got me in the forehead. We have a leaker. All right, let's see if we can get this. Get the head up here. Hopefully, now I can. Not even close. 
close, but not close. Close. All right, that's gonna be a good job. It's got this oil filter housing that's in the way. It's always one side is easier than the other side. I think we almost did it. Right? It's trying to go. more we can clear that housing. Ah, there we go. I'll tell you what, this ain't coming back out. <laughs> now I gotta find the screws. Temporary hold it. These headers are why I want to go ahead and put this header on this side anyway because I got to run the transmission lines they're new transmission lines they're supposed to be uh, for this car but I want to make sure uh, that everything's gonna clear so hopefully I won't have to take it back out to do the transmission lines but I'm gonna leave the oil filter off of it for right now until uh, we get everything Situated. But uh, it's up there though. I don't know if you can see that. I know it's kind of dark, but uh, can't see but it is bolted to the block I got one screw one header bolt up there bolted in I got so much dirt in my face I can't see but anyway uh so we got that up there next I got to get another bolt up on the header Test these transmission lines. You see the header right there. So I'm gonna get a boat on the front side of the block where the header boats up, or on the head rather, and then we'll go from there with that. So I got the transmission lines ran from the transmission up here to the radiator, but I'm thinking there's something missing that the radiator sits in. Surely it just don't sit on the frame like that. So I'm going to have to look into that. But I uh, end up having to take the header back off. <laughs> I didn't figure I would, but <laughs> I couldn't get the transmission lines past the header. So I had to wiggle 
and get them back off. But I got them started uh, in the transmission. And I pretty much got them where they need to be. Uh, I guess I can stick the header back up there now. Look like they're going to sit right above the header. Uh, which is kind of peculiar, but but they are ready to be tightened up. I just haven't tightened them up yet on the transmission. So, but uh, they ran up there. So I'm gonna get these lines tightened up and then put the header back in and we'll see where we're at. Okay, so I got the headers on. They're just kind of temporarily hanging on there. Decided to let it down. It'd be easier to get to the bolts. So anyway, we got this uh, Mr. Gasket Universal Throttle Cable Holder. As you see, I don't have nothing on there to hold the throttle cable, which is right here. So what I'm going to do is try to uh, get this to uh, hook up on the intake. I'm going to have to uh, mount it somewhere over in here so we can hook up our passing gear cable and our throttle cable. Uh, once I had let it down on the ground for messing with the headers, I said, uh, wait a minute, uh, what am I going to hook the throttle cable to? So I know the carburetor came with some little fittings uh, to put on there. So we can hook our cables too. It's got all these different holes. So uh, we can go ahead and get that hooked up. And that'll be just a little small uh, problem fix. I mean, as you doing stuff like this, you run into roadblocks. And uh, oh, and I was able to get a EGR valve also. I was going to make a plate, but then I was like, eh, it'll probably look tacky. So we just got a brand new OEM, OEM style uh, EGR valve. It's all nice and shiny. Brand new, so to go on the intake like that. But before I even start to put that on, I want to get the throttle bracket, throttle cable bracket, I mean, uh, on because it's going to be blocking me from working on the linkage. So we'll get that on and uh, should have that working. So now we're running into a problem. This bracket here, usually they bolt onto the intake. So it can be pointing towards the carburetor when you go to uh, hook your cables up. But now, uh, I don't have anywhere to mount it. I think on GMs, they use it, uh, the intake is usually, uh, I think it's flat right up in here somewhere. Well, that can just mount right down. I mean like on your Chevrolet engines, 350s, 305s, you know. But this, the way the boats are, they're all at an angle. So I'm going to have to come up with some way to mount this thing. Either that or I'm trying to resource out and get the original bracket for the throttle. I think I have one for uh, Chevrolet. got this one off of a Chevrolet engine we might can modify it uh, that's not gonna work it's made kinda funny I think it's these two bow holes right here usually bolts to the intake bolts on a 350 or 305 and then your uh, 
vacuum from your brake booster uh, goes through that. But the way this is made, um, the bolt holes is way apart on this bracket. I can get the back one in, but the front one I have to do some modifying, but then the cables is going to be way off from the side of the carburetor. So, uh, I think some of them you can bolt to the carburetor, but, uh, well, let's see something. I think you can bolt this to the carburetor. Maybe that's. Um, even if I bolt it to the carburetor, it's still gonna be way off. Well, we might be able to make that work. I have to just put it on there and see. That might work. It might just work. We bolt it to the carburetor right here. My memory is starting to come back. I think it actually does bolt to the carburetor. Let me get this uh, off of here and we'll get this bracket on. And uh, we'll see how that lines up. Maybe we'll be able to uh, hook the cables up and uh, make sure they're going to stay lined up and everything. But I think it does hook to the carburetor. Let's get it. I try and start on different parts of it just to see where I'm at see what we're missing what's going to work what's not going to work yeah I can always crank it uh, without the throttle hooked up but you want to go ahead and tackle stuff like this while you're at it so yes that does sit there so let's Totally forgot. <laughs> uh, I work on too much stuff. So that's on. We'll get that tightened down. Let's go ahead and get that tightened down and uh, then we can uh, put our cables in. Let me get a wrench for that. It's all nice and chrome. What they say, chrome don't get you home. Chrome don't get you home. By the way, you can go to O'Reilly's and pick up that little bracket. Uh, it's a 6039. Mr. Gaskets. It'll work on different setups. Guess we'll just go ahead and snug the carburetor down anyway. I don't think I'll be taking it back off. Anytime soon. I think that's where it's gonna live at. 
snug her down. Okay. So now we got our throttle cable. Stretched on out there pretty good. Should just snap right there. The square is where it goes. Should go that way. All right. So there's our cable. Now we just got to uh, put our little fitting on there and a spring and then our uh, kick down cable or detent cable is here tangled up. And it comes through this lower part. I think it's tangled up over there. Let me I'm gonna leave this. It's got like a little adjustment on it. If you pop this little button out, you'll see it spring out. That's how you adjust your detent. So you can set it wherever you want it at, whenever you want transmission to kick down to a different gear. Actually, passing gear, kick down. I think they call it kick down cable, passing gear cable, detent cable. But you can adjust it like that. So we just need to get it in this bottom half of the bracket. Hopefully it works out all right. Spark plug wire is like right in the way. I hope that it fits in there. It looks kind of. I think I'm gonna have to take. Oh, it's it's got the two pieces on there. It's actually a two-piece uh, bracket. One side is bigger than the other side, so I'm gonna have to take that off. Man, I got that thing on there for dear life. Why did they put it on there that tight? This one little bracket here and he's come off. This is actually a universal uh, cable. 
cable bracket. It has the smaller square hole. Well, this one's bigger. And this is also adjustable too the, for the cable. You can loosen this little screw up and it'll slide forward and backwards to reach your carburetor. So now, you should be able to. I liked working on the big stuff better than this small stuff. Should just snap right in there. All right, so that's going to line up just perfect uh, with uh, the hole here at the bottom of the. throttle linkage well, we might have to pull the carburetor back off so I can well I can just fold it forward so the detent cable is going to hook right here at the bottom So it's going to hook right in those screws at the bottom right there. And then your throttle is going to hook in one of these hoses. And we'll run a spring from, I guess, we'll run it from here. There is a hole somewhere on this bracket. I've seen it. The hole is right, right here for the spring. So I guess the spring will run from there. To this tab right here or this tab right here so we'll put a spring there so now I just got to round up the little uh, attachments for the cables and uh, get that on there I think she's gonna work out fine cables ran back here behind the distributor so I think it's going to work out pretty good so uh, let me round up all the little bits and pieces and get the cable hooked up and uh, get a spring on it and uh, we'll go from there alright folks so I had to go to Good old parts store, we picked these up. This is the passing gear detent cable um, connector for the cable. And this is the throttle cable connector that the throttle cable is going to sit on. So we're going to start by putting on the detent cable fitting, connector, or whatever you want to call it, screw. I think get it out the package. Drum roll, please. So it's actually supposed to go in one of these slots uh, on the linkage. So the problem with that is it's going to rub the side of the intake because it's too big so I'm guessing I'm going to have to put it on the inside you can't win for losing I swear and that's not going to work either because it's still going to rub
it might work on the inside of the linkage, but it's not going to work on the outside because this screw or connector fitting, whatever you want to call it. As soon as I get it back in my hand, we really need to put something in there. It's going to uh, rub the back side of this EGR valve housing when it's in there. So I'm going to have to figure out something on that. That's not going to work. Unless I put the cable on the other side, but I will have to uh, grind the threads down a little bit. Um, where if I put it in backwards this way, it won't rub. It's either that or try to grind a little bit down on this surface. Because you really don't want to put another spacer plate up under it because then it would be super high. I don't know when we get ready to put the shaker on. Is it going to be, the carburetor is going to be sitting too high. So, I'm going to have to figure out just to put this thing in. Even if I put it there up higher, it's still going to rub. I have to just find like a, uh, well, that won't work either. I was going to say find a screw, but. So let me go back to the drawing board thinking table and I'll come up with something. So I finally got the throttle linkage hooked up. I had to end up taking a screwdriver and just slightly bend this bracket over a little bit so I can hook up the uh, detent cable. And I was able to get the, uh, the screw with the cable uh, slot made into it and we got the spring on and we got the throttle cable connected so now it's time to put the EGR valve on I have to dig up some screws for it so it's got two different size screws screws it's <laughs> two Two different size screws. Uh, I don't know why GM did that, but one screw is bigger than the other one. So one side is a 14 and the other side is a half inch. Should we leave the OEM sticker on top of the EGR valve or should we take it off? So we'll snug that side down. And we'll come over here and snug this side down. Even though it's not going to be doing anything, just sitting there looking pretty. Efficiently on there. So now we're done with that part of the project. I gotta get some uh, hose clamps for our fuel line. And uh, we're gonna move on to starting to hook the headers up. Well, they're already in. I just gotta finish uh, putting screws on that side to bolt it all the way up. 
this side here uh, I'm waiting on some parts for the uh, steering column uh, linkage that goes into the frame over to the transmission so I can't just really uh, bolt this header up yet but uh, we're making way uh, I gotta clean up the little cover that goes on the windshield washer uh, motor or windshield wiper motor and uh, we gotta run us a vacuum line from the brake booster over to the uh, carburetor so Slowly but surely we're getting there, so uh, I'm going to uh, try and get this header on the other side hooked up. Alright, so we are moving along with the Trans Am build. We got our new uh, radiator shroud. I'm thinking it's new is what he told me. Uh, we got our new radiator, the correct radiator installed because that one was uh, too narrow and it wasn't the right one so we actually got the right radiator for it uh, we got our new alternator on we got our power steering pump on uh, we're waiting on the alternator belt uh, we got our bottom radiator hose I just got to put on we're waiting on the top radiator hose and we're waiting on these uh, little rubber inserts that go up under the radiator and the shroud on top to keep the radiator supported. Uh, as I said before, we got our EGI valve on, our throttle linkage is set, we got our uh, heater hoses connected. Um, actually, I got one still off over there, but I left that off for a reason. Um, I got to make sure the hose is going to fit that fitting. Uh, what else? We got our headers on, which we got the headers on, but I'm still waiting on the uh, the uh, column linkage that goes down to the transmission. Well, it goes from the column down to the transmission. We're waiting on that bushing that goes into the frame down there. So, we pretty much got everything mechanical-wise on the car on it, uh, like our alternate and stuff like that. Uh, then I'm going to start going through these wires now. These wires, I got them labeled, but I'm going to have to probably shorten some and uh, replace all the, uh, I don't know what you call this, the wire cover, skin, whatever stuff. <laughs> replace that and make it look nice and neat. But like I say, we're still waiting on a couple more parts and uh, I can complete uh, those uh, other items. I still got to run the fuel line because on the Pontiac motor, uh, the fuel pump was on that side of the car, driver's side, which on Oldsmobile is on this side. So I got to run some fuel line because the fuel line is on the opposite side of the car. So we got to run that over. And uh, pretty much is it. Uh, we should be ready to fire this thing up. Oh, and I got to run a vacuum line from the brake booster over to the carburetor. So. Um, everything else is looking pretty good. We got to hook up the transmission lines once we get the rubbers down there up under the radiator. And uh, like I say, uh, got a got a little lengthy list. We got to put the drive shaft in it, and then we got to go to the back and check the gas tank. So there's still some more stuff to do to the car before we actually crank it. But now that it's all together, we should be done ordering uh, miscellaneous parts and it'd be time to uh, really fire this thing up and see what it's going to do so just uh, keep watching and uh, like I say thank you to all the subscribers that have subscribed finally hit that thousand subscriber mark I really appreciate that guys like I said I've been doing this for a long time and uh, it's finally paying off so uh, like I said I got a bunch of stuff still coming up uh, finding new abandoned projects, new, uh, just new stuff. So just uh, y'all stay subscribed in, tuned in, and uh, things are really going to be uh, changing on the channel. Uh, just trying to find new things to do content on. But uh, but yeah, the Trans Am she'll be running pretty soon. Like I say, we just got some little more stuff to do, and uh, 
that's basically it so I'll keep y'all tuned in on this build and then um, once we get through with this one uh, I got my 72 Mustang hopefully that's going to be out of the uh, paint shop and we'll be putting it back together finally after two years we'll be putting it back together uh, that's going to be a fun project so so anyway just uh, stay tuned and uh, y'all be careful out there